Hey, Retcon Raider here, and welcome back to episode 77. Well, we made it back to friendly territory, did some trading, resupplied, and now we've got our equipment back in good working order. We also stopped by the local tavern and picked up a rumor about an artifact hidden in the Heap of Bones, a stronghold we passed on the way back to town. It's definitely worth checking out, but first, I thought we'd warm up by taking out this goblin hunting party. I did a little shopping while we were in town, so you'll notice that some of the raiders have updated loadouts. Reinhardt has a new fighting spear, Ariton and Kazarin have new helmets, and I've started giving our archers some color-coordinated armor. It's not much, but it's a start. As for the fight, this should be pretty straightforward. We've taken on plenty of goblins lately, so a pack of wolf riders and a handful of ambushers shouldn't pose much of a challenge. Alright, our archers are up, so let's have them focus on neutralizing the ambushers first. Fox starts us off, shooting an ambusher through the shoulder. Alessandro kills the wounded ambusher. Rowan shoots a wolf rider through the leg. Woe cripples another rider's arm. Ariton punctures a rider's lung, then stabs him in the side for good measure. Kazarin kills a rider and his wolf on the southern flank. Reinhard moves to cover the northern flank. Janos crushes a rider's arm. Belhantan kills the wounded rider's wolf, then kills the rider as well. The Wolf Riders are continuing to circle wide. Rondus takes a very light hit. Belfontan takes two light hits. Fox shoots an ambusher in the gut. Then Bunny finishes him off. Alessandro shoots another ambusher through the arm. Rowan takes down a rider with his crossbow. Rondas hacks open a rider's arm with his greatsword. Kazarin takes down another wolf and rider, while Reinhard continues covering the north. Ariton takes out the last wolf rider on our line then moves to cover the archers. 
Kano starts moving, then notices there's a wolf next to him and kills it with his great hammer. Moving into round three. Some of the wolf riders are still trying to move into a flanking position. But it looks like a few of them have gotten tired of trying to outmaneuver us. Fox takes down another ambusher, then puts a second arrow through a rider's leg. Hmm. Washtek puts an arrow in a rider's side. Rowan shoots another rider in the gut. Belfontan guts and kills a rider's wolf. Kazarin starts rushing the last ambusher. Janos crushes a rider's skull. Reinhardt finishes off a wolf, then locks down two more riders before they can flee. Ariton starts rushing another wolf rider. Round four, and there they go. Reinhard takes a couple of light armor hits. Washtek takes down a fleeing rider's wolf. Fox takes out a dismounted rider then takes out a wolf as well. <laughs> Alessandro takes out two more riders before they can flee. At this point, all the remaining enemies are either fleeing or have already fled. Reinhardt stabs the last rider through the kidney, breaking his morale. The fleeing ambusher is getting pretty far away, but we'll sick the dogs on him in a second. Rowan mows down the last wolf, then mows down the last rider as well. Nicely done. The rest of the raiders start pursuing the fleeing ambusher. And here come the dogs. As always, we want to unleash as many dogs as possible. We need to keep the ambusher overwhelmed so he can't actually fight back.
the Doomsday Pack isn't having much luck. That probably means we need more dogs. There we go. Most of the ambusher's armor is gone. Oh, but he landed a hit on the wolf. Now he's got arterial bleeding. And now he's dead. Alright, looks like that earned us a couple of level ups. Wo just hit level 12. And Rowan hit level 11. Congratulations. It also looks like Kazarin pulls MVP with four kills. The writers dropped a usual assortment of goblin trash, but we've got room, so we'll grab everything. Next, we're headed into the Heap of Bones. I don't think we've ever gone up against honor guards before, so this should be interesting. Now, this is going to be a pretty tough fight. Honor Guards are basically ancient legionaries on steroids. They've got stronger weapons, heavier armor, and some of them even have area attacks. Since there's a single Necrosavant in there, we can't afford to bring any of our archers, so we're going in heavy. Hopefully, this will be enough. Hmm. Okay, the starting terrain actually looks pretty good, but we are a little too close to that elevation there. Let's pull the entire company back exactly two spaces, then we'll wait for the honor guards to come to us. And there they are, our first honor guards. The polearm there is a war site. It's the only polearm in the game that can attack multiple targets at once. The other two honor guards are equipped with crypt cleavers, which are the only two-handed cleavers in the game, so we're going to be seeing a lot of bleeding injuries. It does look like we lucked out, though. A lot of these honor guards are equipped with more conventional weaponry. That'll be a bit easier to handle. Now the raiders will just hold position and cycle into round two. Hmm. Looks like the Necrosavant is holding position, so we'll continue holding position as well. Alright, we've got enemies within striking range. Time to begin our attack. Nice. That's a good solid hit, but it's going to take a lot more to get through their armor. We'll need to focus fire and bring down enemy units as quickly as possible. Ah, here comes the necro -Savant. He was just waiting for us to get locked up in combat. We'll need to take him out as quickly as possible, too. Okay, raiders. Hit them hard and fast. Don't give them time to overwhelm you.
We've already got the Necro Savant on the brink of death. Ooh. There's a light bleeding injury on Roderick, but he's fine. Hopefully he can finish off the Necro Savant this turn. Nice. That's one less threat to worry about. I got Decapitates, one of the Honor Guards. Then he advances and quickly finishes off another one with his dagger. I am a bit concerned about this cluster on the Northern Line. That's a lot of concentrated firepower. We'll need to keep a close eye on things. Oswald just took a medium bleeding wound. Oh, shoot. Okay. Oswald is in... Whoa! Alright, Oswald is in immediate peril. We need to pull him back. Jeez, they just obliterated his armor. Even if we pull him out at this point, I don't think we can stop that bleeding. Janos clears out another honor guard. Round four. If we can rally Oswald, we can at least equip his shield and put him back on the defensive. I guess not. All right, let's try giving Oswald some breathing room. I'm hesitant to move Roderick in because he's only wearing medium armor and he's already bleeding. I guess he should be fine as long as we keep his guard up. Dominic takes down another honor guard on the south. I got cuts down an honor guard, giving Oswald a little more space. It just wasn't enough. Yeah, Oswald is dead. I guess it was bound to happen sooner or later, but you're never really ready for it. Kazarin takes down the last honor guard on the south. There goes Oswald's war dog, but hopefully it bought us enough time to finish this. Janos takes down another honor guard. Moving into round five. This should be over soon.
Roderick takes out two honor guards with a single swing. The rest of the raiders begin converging on the final foe, eager for vengeance. Wo takes down the last of the Honor Guards. That avenges Oswald's death, but I still feel bad about losing him. He's been a part of the Raiders for a long time. Sorry, Oswald. I let you down. On the bright side, it looks like I got hits level 13. It also looks like I got and Roderick are tied for MVP. Hmm. And to make things even worse, it looks like we didn't find any unique items. We've got Oswald's shield, of course, but everything else is normal equipment. I guess at the very least we picked up some war scythes and crypt cleavers. Those are potentially useful, but they have a very low durability. Alright, I'll take care of the loot off screen, and then I guess we need to go recruiting. It's been a while since I've dusted off the waiting list. While on the road, you come across a crowd of people huddled around a mound of earth. Getting closer, you realize that it's a funeral. One of the attendees turns to look at you. Did you know him? Did you fight by his side? You shake your head and start cutting into the crowd to see the man himself. You find a man looking about as old as the dead can look. He's got a terrifically sharp and glinting sword running along his chest with his grubby worm food fingers clutching the pommel. Rondus the Worm King joins your side and whispers, That's uh, a pretty nice looking weapon there. Just saying. Well, as tempting as it is to steal from a funeral, I think we'll pass, especially so soon after losing one of our own. Speaking of which, at the moment we're taking a tour of the countryside in hopes of finding a halfway decent recruit. I'm hoping we can find something relatively quickly, a hedge knight if possible, but knowing the game's RNG, it may be several days before we can find someone who can actually survive on our front line. We'll be back once I have something to report. After weeks spent listening for rumors, buying pints of beer for decrepit old veterans, and negotiating with wheedling crones, you were able to ferret out the locations of a prestigious weapon, shield, armor, and helmet. Having learned where to find the pieces, all that remained was the minor matter of defeating the various horrors and cutthroats guarding it. Now, soon to be worn by the men of your company, the pieces form a set fearsome to behold. The man who dons this arming onto the battlefield will see the fiercest enemy hobble away shaking a load down the leg of his pants. Eriton the Merciless exclaims proudly, and to the laughing approval of his brothers in arms, you only hope their joy and excitement doesn't turn into envy once you announce which man will get to wear the pieces. That's another ambition under our belt. It's a good thing, too, because it helps offset the massive loss of morale we suffered from losing Oswald. Of course, they did make our accomplishment sound a bit more epic than it actually was. All we actually did was spend 20,000 gold buying a new helmet. That eats up half of our savings, but it's worth it. The glorious bassinet is both stronger and lighter than a full plate helm. Besides, like I said, we really needed that morale boost. At any rate, it's taking longer than I thought it would to find a suitable replacement for Oswald, so we'll end things here for now. I'll keep looking for a new recruit between episodes, and next time, we'll pick up with the introduction of our newest raider. Hey, Retcon Raider here. Well, I guess we couldn't stave off death forever. He's finally claimed another raider. 
At the very least, I guess we can take some consolation knowing that Oswald died fighting one of the most powerful foes in the game. Better to die against a legion of honor guards than against a goblin or a bandit. Unfortunately, this is just a taste of what we're in for as we begin our march towards the final crisis. Once the armies of the dead begin to rise, we'll find ourselves facing off against a lot more of those honor guards. Oswald may have been our first casualty, but I have a sneaking suspicion he'll be far from the last. At the very least, this does mean that we'll finally be seeing some movement on the waiting list again. Next time, we'll be joined by Sir Skelebit, who's either going to be a noble or a hedge knight, depending on which one I can recruit first. Those kinds of recruits are generally much more expensive, but they also have the benefit of having higher base stats and a higher starting level. Of course, even with a few levels already under his belt, it's going to take Sir Skelebit a while to catch up with the rest of the raiders. We also need to take on some more contract work, because our coffers are starting to get a bit light again. Buying that new helmet really set us back. But we'll worry about that next time. For now, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for watching. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Battle Brothers, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website or the Fan Run Wiki. Links are in the description.